but also from a handicapping point of view here, Mark, take me through Mm -hmm. this because in the past we were maybe lining up just two teams or maybe four teams. And part of that equation that you sort of want to balance is saying to yourself like, yeah, I would like to take an SEC team, but my goodness, they might end up with two losses and my team won't even make the college football playoff, let alone be able to win a championship with more teams added. Does that change your handicapping IQ when trying to pick a team out to win a national championship now? Yeah, of course. I mean, like, I would never pick a team to win the college football playoff that I didn't think at a minimum could win their conference and make the final four, right? Like that had to be the determinant. Could they win their conference and make the final four? Now I don't have to worry about that. Now I just have to look at how good a team is on their own merit and hope they get a good enough draw in the 12 team seating and, and a good enough path to get them through. So clearly you can open up your sort of futures markets a little bit wider now and take flyers on teams that might not necessarily be there. I mean, you know, going into the beginning of last season, we didn't know that Texas was going to, going to be as good as they were. We thought they would be competitive, right? But we had no real data points to say Texas was going to make the college football playoff. In fact, we had more to say that they weren't. Now you can go into it with a team like Texas. I can go into it with a team, any of these teams in the Big 12, and go, you know, if they got a shot to be one of the top 12 teams in the nation, they get a good enough draw. If they avoid the one yeah. seed in Georgia or the two seed you know, whoever it may be, Florida State, whatever it may be, and go, well, you know, they could get a shot here if they're in the six or seven spot and have a clear path where we get down to the final four and you're in this coin flip situation. So, yeah, it's clearly going to change your handicapping perspective from a futures market. It really has to. When you look at those national championship odds, Penn State and Notre Dame tied for the 10th best price at 25 to 1. But if we keep Penn State up there, nine of those 10 best prices that you see hail from either the SEC or or the Big Ten. The top eight prices, all from the SEC or the Big Ten. Five from the Southeastern Conference, three from the Big Ten Conference. It also impacts the way you look at win totals. The days of Texas or Alabama running through their conference and maybe going 11 and 1, but guaranteed at least probably only one loss, are long gone because of the gauntlet you have to play in your respective league. You will see win totals not at a guaranteed 10 and a half or 11 and a hook, but nine and a half. And there is still some merit to a nine and three team earning an at large berth out of the Big Ten or SEC into the college football playoff. Zeno, I did the examination yesterday based on the national title odds right now. We don't have conference championship odds just yet, but in the five plus seven format, the five automatic berths for a conference champion in the seven at-large teams, I had five SEC teams, three to four Big Ten teams, depending on if it's Penn State or Notre Dame, you give the edge to it 25 to one, only one ACC team, only one Big 12 team, and only one non-power four group of five champion, that would be Liberty, at 500 to one. The SEC and the Big Ten are going to be the stakeholders in this college football playoff format. That's just the reality of this changing landscape in college football. Yeah, and again, it goes back to the futures markets on it. Like, you know, you're better off taking two or three SEC teams to win the whole thing or two or three Big Ten teams to win the whole thing than taking a flyer on anybody else, even if they've got good odds, whether it's Notre Dame or what. Because what, let, let's just say you take Notre Dame, right, and you, you have great odds at 25-1, to 1, and they have a 11-1 a and 1 season. There's a legitimate chance they would have to go through not one, not two, but three SEC opponents to get there. For sure. Like, we believe Notre Dame is good enough to beat three consecutive SEC teams to win a national title. I don't. Like, not there's not a world where I believe that Notre Dame can pull that feat off beating three straight SEC opponents of that caliber. So – you know, when you start to look at how this all breaks down, what's the reason for me to take a flyer on a Big 12 team? Like, honestly, like what, 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 there's just too much of a gauntlet to go through against the Big 10 and the SEC to get to the top of the mountain. I mean, you know, I, I just I, I think the math doesn't work out in your favor for anybody but those two conferences. Yeah, the cream really will rise to the top this year in that college football playoff. You're right about that. Used to be in the BCS era. Hey, it's one versus two. You got to win one football game in your national champion. Now you got to go through the gauntlet here, running all the way through. We'll see how that does play out. Talk about running through the gauntlet. How about this? The Heisman Trophy odds for next year being up. It's 10 guys here at 20 to 1 or less here in the Heisman market. So, Mark, I'll ask you first here. Ewers, Beck, Howard, Gabriel, Milrow, anybody catching your eye before the season starts as a legitimate chance to get that Heisman Trophy? 
I mean, when that list pops up, there's only one name that I want to go grab. Noah Fafita of Arizona. At, at that wow. price, I mean, the number that he put up last year and what he's capable of, and what Arizona was capable of, uh, I think that that is a very live individual to sneak into this thing, given the numbers where they are now. Uh, he was one of the more unheralded quarterbacks in what was left of the Pac-12. May they rest in peace, um, you know, as, as far as <laughs> what they were able to do last year. But, look, you know, Jet Fish has turned that program around, man, and, and they are they are a legitimate team to be contended with, uh, even though they're playing a tougher schedule. Fafita stole a job from a yeah. really good quarterback, right? Like, Jaden Delora was a really good quarterback, and, and they threw for a ton of yards at Arizona with him, and all of a sudden this kid comes in and steals the job from him. I think there's every chance to believe that he could do it again. You give him a full 12 games under his belt, he could put up some eye-popping numbers. Jed Fish, of course, making his way to Washington. A lot of people thought Fafita yeah. would follow him up to the Pacific Northwest. He remains with Brent Brennan, the new head coach, coming over from San Jose State for the Wildcats. Is there a reason, Donnie, you stopped at the top five names and didn't go to Nico Iame Lava, the quarterback for Tennessee next year? I thought his name was I'm going to be leaving soon here. So, yeah, we left that one right out of the equation. <laughs> who he yeah, played yeah. for and who his name is really came up for that name. Yeah. That's a pretty good one there. Listen, we've done this many a times. DJ Uyongalele Iame Lava mm-hmm. is how you pronounce his last name, Nico I. I'm sure some members of the Spiz Grizz Network yep. will call him entering next year. I did want to just make this point, Zeno, about what you said in terms of Notre Dame. Because the Irish remain independent, Notre Dame in this new 12-team format will never be able to be a top four team that earns an opening round by in the college football playoff. Until they join a conference, which certainly does not seem imminent, Notre Dame will never earn a buy in the new CFP. They can host an on-campus playoff game under the watchful eye of Touchdown Jesus, but their margin of getting to the CFP does expand with the number of at-large berths being seven, but they will never earn an opening round buy. And we had never seen a two-loss team in the 10-year history of the four-team format make the college football playoff there's going to be multiple two-loss teams and maybe some three-loss teams once again from the Big Ten and the SEC in this 12-team expanded field. From college football to college basketball. We win with Zinn. Not the things you put in your lips with Mark Zinno. Up next, live right here on the early line on Sportsman. 